last leg then, 100 yeah. mile push. Let's find a hotel or a cabin I think we're in tonight. We'll Ooh. find out. Well, back on the bike for the final leg of the journey today then. There's the support vehicle waiting patiently. Nigel will be bringing that along later. There's a few more still at the uh, museum looking around. But what a fascinating World Heritage site that was. Thoroughly recommend it to the house. As we say, open 10 till 5. Check it out if you're in Alberta. And what a location. One of the very impressive things about it is we're on these planes and uh, it's a big museum as you saw hopefully by those few clips that I took. But look, you can barely see it from the road. It's completely hidden. Nice bit of architecture that. Right, I mean these planes, you could just imagine the buffalo herding across, can't you? And the, the skill of the indigenous peoples to actually round those up, corral them such that they would leap off those cliffs and basically cull them for their meat. Incredible. Some would dress as carve buffalo, so the buffalo would follow those, and then some would dress as wolves, which would then drive them through funnels and off the side of the edge of the cliff. Ingenious things, men, aren't they? Anyway, every day is a school day on the Missenden Fly. Next up, let's find our cabins for the night, which are hopefully air-conditioned, because we could do with a bit of uh, coolness. It's 87 out here now, would you believe? What a difference a day makes, eh? permit again. Right, let's see if we have the right pass. Hi. I'm a bit confused. <laughs> what have we been told? Do we need a new pass for Waterton? You're good till uh, tomorrow at four. Lovely, thank you. Thanks. That was all right. So that's good. The passes we bought uh, yesterday are good until four o'clock tomorrow. So uh, this is Waterton National Park that we're in now. And those Canadian uh, National Park passes that we bought, I think back up at Jasper, were valid all those days through. So uh, we're good until tomorrow and we'll be long gone out of the park by four o'clock tomorrow. Right, four miles until uh, we get to our cabins. Stroke Motel, Stroke Hotel, not quite sure what it is, but we'll find out soon enough. Well, welcome to Waterton Lakes, folks. It's nice to be back in the mountains. Nice looking hotel up the top there. Don't think that's ours. But it's got a sort of a Alpine Lodge look about it, right on the lake there, very nice indeed. Well, this is all very pleasant. That's gotta be the ugliest caravan ever. Anyway, let's not worry too much about that. Well, this is all very quaint as it goes for Canada. Let's uh, find where we are. Looking for the Bayshore Hotel, which apparently is down here on the left. No right turn, if I'm not mistaken. Road closed. Hmm. Oh yeah, here we go. Where do we park? Bonjour. Thank you very much. Yeah. Perfect. Alright, I'll come round and stick it in there. Alright, I'll, I'll come round again. Yeah, 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 no Perfect, should we take it? No, no, no. Alright. Might have to give you to help me push. Okay. Perfect, thank you. 
That'll work. <laughs> well, welcome to Waterton, folks. We're in this sort of uh, motel -y type thing, but uh, it's absolutely perfect. The setting here is amazing. It's got a sort of a European -y feel to it, actually. A few bars and things over there. It's still uh, 83 Fahrenheit, so pretty warm. Gonna unload the bike, get ourselves a drink. All right, so I think we struck gold here, Carol, don't you? What an absolute winner. Right, let me show you around our uh, home for the night. Here we go. Sort of a motel affair. Two massive beds, lovely air con, lovely and cool in here. Got a fridge, which is excellent, and a uh, pretty reasonable looking bathroom. Let's check out the shower situation. Oh, shower curtain, but nothing's perfect. That's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, quite a down the bike, that Carol, wasn't it? Quite a big one. Yeah, it was. I'm pretty tired. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it though. The start of it was brilliant, some really great twisty rows. And then uh, that museum was, was amazing, um, really enjoyed that. Uh, and then the planes, I've, I've never ridden anywhere quite like that before. Um, but yeah, quite a tiring old ride in the heat. But uh, tomorrow, much easier day. We're only doing 140 miles, but I'll tell you about that tomorrow. All right, we'll see you then. Well, good morning, folks, and welcome back to uh, the quaint town of Waterton here in uh, Alberta. We're on the border with uh, the US, with Montana in fact. And today, that's exactly where we're going. I've got the map, I'll go and find Mrs. Flower who's got us a coffee and uh, I'll show you where we're going. Right, so I found Mrs. Flower here at Starbucks with a coffee. Good morning. Morning. Uh, so yeah, the route we're doing today is um, back into Glacier National Park, firstly over the border into Montana. It's the little pink line on the map here. So here we are, we're at Waterton up here, just on the border uh, between Canada and the US, we're going down here. Uh, through this bit which is called the road to the sun it's quite high and i think it's going to be amazing views uh, down to a place called big fork where we're going to spend the the evening so relatively short day only about uh, 140 miles yeah. something like that so uh, hopefully we'll be there in good time so we'll have a bit of a bit of a rest this evening hopefully anyway we'll see you on the bike okay so that's our time at waterton coming to an end we're all packed up ready to go because the first thing that we're doing is a border crossing and we've got uh, Nigel with the support vehicle with all our bags in the back. We're all going to cross the border at the same time So we're going to ride as a group up to the border. I think it's only about 20 miles and once we're in the US We shall all do our own thing again And in the passport, so yeah. I'll move So, uh, sir, I do need you to take your helmet off. Yep, okay. So I can see Thank you. Thanks. Oh, that was pretty straight I'll see you up here with Alf, yeah? Well, the US of A. Very exciting, isn't it? It is very exciting. We've now crossed the border. <laughs> All seems fairly relaxed and straightforward. That was no bother, was it? Yeah, it's fairly straightforward, that one. Be interested to see how they get on with Nigel, though, with the truck. Yeah. That's the only... Did you warn them that he was coming through? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he wasn't really that bothered, to be fair. He didn't look interested at all. Just didn't like me looking at his computer, which I wasn't actually. <laughs> right, well, we made it to St. Mary's. Right, we're going to see if we can find ourselves a cafe. Get ourselves something to eat. 
So slight change of plan. Uh, we've had a, a coffee and a bun here, so we've had a bit of a recharge, but unfortunately, uh, Alf went forward to try and get some uh, tickets for the National Park, and it turns out that yesterday, they implemented a new system where you had to book in advance and get yourself a slot to get into the National Park. Apparently tickets went for sale online yesterday at six o'clock and were sold out at five past six. So, uh, and there's no way around it. He tried pleading, etc., but we can't get through the National Park to do the uh, road to the sun, which is a real shame. So instead, we're gonna do the alternative route, which the truck was gonna have to do anyway, which is effectively round the mountain. It's still very scenic apparently, uh, but not quite as planned. It adds another 30 miles or something to the day. But as the day was quite short anyway, no big deal. So uh, yeah, we'll get togged up and we'll try the alternative route, see what that brings. All right, cheerio St. Mary's then. Shame about the road to the sun, but it turns out this alternative route that we've got is actually known as the scenic route. So uh, should be pretty good. And of course, now we're in the US, it might mean I can get the drone up as well, because I've got the right passes and so on for that. All looking good. Right, let's see what this scenic route has to offer. In my mind, I always had Montana as somewhere that uh, was just plains and prairies and cowboys, that sort of thing. I never had it as mountainous, whereas of course, there is a bit of a clue in the, in the title, isn't there? I'm sure Montana means mountains. And there's definitely no lack of them here. This view out to my right in particular, absolutely stunning. Looks like they've had some fires here. With the trees stripped of their foliage again. Looks like we're into some roadworks once again. Let's hope we don't have to wait too long here. Right, it looks like there's nearly some movement and it's going to be loose gravel. So uh, this is going to be fun. But we've got an old gold wing behind us, so if he can do it on a gold wing, I'm sure we can do it on a GS. In fact, most of our crew are caught up ahead in it. So they've been waiting for ages because they left some time before us. Hate riding on this stuff. However, we've got used to it on this trip. A necessary evil in this case. Pretty impressive views up here. And the gravel has given way to slippery mud now. <laughs> Excellent. I can now see why the wait was so long for the pilot car because if you look down there, way over there, look probably a couple of miles away, it's still roadwork. So we've got quite a lot of this to go, unfortunately. Still, views are nice. Look on the bright side. And at last, we're back onto tarmac, at least for the time being. I don't know if it's going to uh, continue for long, but gives me a little bit of a respite. And as I suspected, we're quickly coming back onto some gravel. Bother. And at last, it looks like we're coming onto some more tarmac again. I don't know if that's actually the end of the roadworks, but again, a bit of a respite off of the slippery stuff. Oh, I think the end might be nigh. I see a queue of cars up here. I think we're rejoining proper road. Thank goodness. <laughs> Wish it wasn't too terrible, but just very slow going for quite some distance. Right, back on it. Wow. That's a good one. So this may not be the road to the sun that we'd hoped, but uh, it certainly is a great road. Got some lovely sweeping bends on here. Very nice. Just seen a sign that says rough road for next seven miles. So uh, we'll see what they mean by rough. If it's like this, it'll be all right. This is just normal for us for the home. Hmm past another sign saying motorcycle advisory intermittent pavement alternative routes advised <laughs> splendid so 
being back in Gran Canaria. I think the trick is just to take it easy on these roads and enjoy the views. I must admit, a little barrier to our right would be nice. In Spain, they do give you barriers. Here, you just plop off. It's the land of the free. Definitely the home of the brave. <laughs> Seems to have caught up with our whole group now. Which is quite fun seeing them all spread out ahead of us. We haven't seen that much at all on this trip. Hopefully we won't do the buffalo leap thing. And follow them all off of a precipice. Well, I definitely wasn't expecting this in Montana, that's for sure. Wow. Now that is a view. Incredible. So that certainly did turn out to be a scenic ride. And uh, the rough road warnings and all the rest of it. I mean, yeah, the roads were nowhere near as nice as they had been until now, but frankly, we get those sort of roads like that at home all the time. Reminded me going around those twisties and the hairpins a bit like being in Spain or Gran Canaria. We've certainly done a lot worse there, but that was, uh, that was a really nice ride. By worse, I mean tighter, more nagery hairpins. But a very nice ride through here. Made a bit of a change after all those uh, planes that we did yesterday with the big long straight roads going on for mile after mile to actually get hit some proper twisties. We're out of the twisties, back onto slightly faster roads, slightly more open landscape again. But yeah, that was uh, quite different that stretch of ride. Made a nice change. East Glacier Park we're in now. Whether we'll get to see a glacier, I'm not sure. There is there is one here somewhere called East Glacier. I'm not sure if we actually ride past it though. This is the town of East Glacier. Grizzly Gas. Might get some gas when I get get the chance actually. Quite a nice little bakery there. Motels, that sort of caper. RV parks. Usual sort of deal. Wow, looks like a real western town. What a place. So we've joined the uh, going to the Sun Road now, according to the Satnav. A bit more of a major road, obviously. Still spectacular though, these mountain ranges either side of us. Clouds just kissing the tops. It's uh, 65 degrees Fahrenheit down here, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we've made the right call on wearing the jeans again today. And uh, it's just a comfortable temperature now. Just don't need to be get wet, that's all. But according to the sat nav, we've got 91 miles to go, so a couple of hours and we'll be at our hotel. So although it's turned out to be a very different day to the one that we had planned, it's actually been absolutely fine. So there's a little bit of rain in the air, so we've decided to pull over and get our uh, waterproof covery things on as we've only got our jeans. <laughs> Mrs. Fly's having a little bit of difficulty getting hers on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, stop messing about. Time you've got time you've got them on, the rain will be gone. 
Well, I think the rain's going to put pay to me dronage. Right, after much faff, Mrs. Flyer has now got her waterproofs on. <laughs> right, watch out. <coughs> Knew we should have put the full ruckers on. Oh well. Right, let's get out of here. Alf also happened to stop to do the same thing. Ah, uh, I thought it was all going too well today. What with the closed border crossing, the inability to get the uh, <laughs> the national park tickets until six o'clock, and now Al's doubting that is thinking it might not be six, but he's going to check it out. And then the decision not to wear our wet weather gear all day, and then it starts to rain. So it's gone quite well so far. On the upside, I can see some blue sky ahead. That's typical, just as you get your kit on, weather improves. Anyway, won't complain about that. It is called the going to the sun road, so you know, 